Good morning, this is Angela with Parkos Permaculture. I'm down in the back of my garden here in Portland, Oregon in zone 8B. I am next to the duck house. You might hear the ducks and chickens behind me. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. Let me show you what is right behind me over here. My Jude the Obscure Rose is in full bloom and my Clematis Montana above it as well. One of my favorite early displays in the garden and I'm sitting next to a black currant that is just unbelievably aromatic. So I have this beautiful mingling of the aroma of the black currant and of the roses behind me. And I'm spending some time just having a little bit of quiet solitude. Life has been really hectic and it's hard for me to find those moments to just sit and quietly, you know, be alone with my thoughts and my work. And this morning I'm taking advantage of the fact that it's a holiday and I am doing a little bit of spinning out in the garden. I'm working on spinning hair from my dog Apollo. Let me show you real quickly. This is all I have left. Doing pretty good on it. Um, and then I'm going to be knitting that into something. So I wanted to show you a little bit of how that's going today. I found that in spinning this fiber, I've spun fiber from other poodles that we've had, and it's been a little bit finer, but they've always been female poodles. So this is the first time I've spun from, from a male. And whether it's Apollo's particular coat or because of his sex, I'm finding that the yarn is a little bit coarser, but also loftier. So we'll see how it looks once I set the twist. It gets a good wash. What the final yarn actually looks like. It's very soft. It's very soft, but it's not like, you know, merino soft. So for me, I'm interested to see how this works. It has less elasticity than wool. So probably more like an alpaca yarn in that regard. And I'm excited to get the second bobbin spun up and then to get it plied and get knitting with it. So for me, I've talked in the past about how this experiment is something that, you know, is not gonna save the world, but it's something that I'm really enjoying doing and gets me focused about intentionally using my resources and what are all of the ways that I can be more mindful and how I use waste products out of my home, right? So. For me, it's a bit of a thought experiment. It's a bit of a meditative practice when I am spinning on the wheel. Oh, by the way, this is an Ashford um, traditional wheel. I got it used years ago for an absolute steal. Very, very good beginner wheel. I It's my second wheel. Actually, I have a Louette as well, but I prefer my Ashford. Um, so for me, taking time with my wheel and enjoying just the rhythmic nature of it. Sometimes I listen to music, sometimes I listen to podcasts, sometimes all I do is sit quietly. Well, as quiet as it, quiet as it can be with ducks and chickens, very interested in what I'm doing. But it's such a rhythmic practice. It's such a, a you know repetitive motion that it almost becomes a meditation unto itself. And for me, it's a very important practice to spend some time where I'm spinning, where I'm not distracted by music, I'm not distracted by podcasts, and I can be alone with my thoughts, and I can kind of drift into a space where I can let go of a little bit of my anxiety, let go of those running lists in my head, and just focus on what I'm doing in the moment with the spinning. So for me, there's the end result of, of using fiber. I try to source all of my wool for free or as cheap as I can. Um, so waste product wool that like other people don't want that has to be skirted and washed and, and prepared. Um, so I'm using a waste product. I am creating yarn that I will knit with, usually for gift knitting. But the process itself is as important, if not more so than the end product. The fact that it is not just about what I'm producing, but it is the process that I'm engaging with that, that has meaning and purpose for me is really is really an important part of why I took up spinning in the first place. For someone who's very busy, it's a chance to kind of quiet myself down, to focus on something simple and um, 
even if my neighbors are trimming hedges and things like that. So I'm gonna get back to spinning, enjoy this quiet time here in the morning, as quiet as it can be in the city, but for me, be able to, to kind of connect with the process and the rhythm of that process. I hope that you're able to find ways that you can slow down, quiet your brain, that you can be present in the moment. I've talked in the past about how mindfulness can be really important for permaculture. You know, I'm not, I'm not somebody who necessarily views mindfulness as a spiritual practice. I view it as an important part of being a human being in the modern world where everything is very fast paced and not as it should be. It's a good way to anchor myself and reconnect with the values and goals that I have in the way that I think we should be living our lives. So however much time I get to do that for me is really important. So I'll show you a little bit of what I'm doing. I hope you are staying well and safe. I hope you're getting a chance to engage in those practices that are meaningful for you. I hope you are enjoying this House Frau Friday and I'll be back really soon. Thanks.